Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Planty part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about the reproduction in gymnosperms. So let us see how reproduction takes place in case of gymnosperms. Now the gymnosperms are heterosporous. We sometime back spoke about heterosporous and homosporous, right? Hetero means different sporous spores. So the sporangia here will produce two types of spores. One is microspores, the other is megaspores. So the microspores are small in size and they will give rise to, these spores will germinate to form the male gametophyte. And the megaspores are large in size and they will germinate to give rise to the female gametophyte. Now the spores are spirally arranged to form compact structure called strobili or cones. Now in case of gymnosperms, the strobili are more commonly known as cones. So we often refer it as male cone and female cone. So that is how the structure looks like. So if you look at the picture of a pine tree, you actually see a a cone shaped structure. So those cones are nothing but the male cones and the female cones. So here we have two types of spores and we also have two types of cones. So each type of cone will produce the respective type of spores. For example, I mean the, the microspores will get spirally arranged to form the compact structure called the male cone. Similarly, the megaspores will form the female cone. So microspore, microspore will form the male cone and megaspores will form the female cone. So now what will happen? So something like this will happen when I talk about the male strobili. This male strobili will have the microsporangiate and this microsporangiate will have the male strobili or the male cone with microsporophyll. I told you right what is strawberry it is nothing but the sporophylls connected together. So here also the male strawberry will have the microsporophylls. Now this will then produce the microspores. So this will produce microspores. This microspores will develop into the male gametophyte. And this male gametophyte will then produce the male gametes or which is also referred as sperm. So this is how the male gametes are produced. Similarly, in case of the female strobili, the female strobili contains the megasporangiate. Megasporangiate will consist of the megasporophylls. These megasporophylls will then produce the megaspores which will germinate to form the female gametophyte. And this female gametophyte will then produce the female gametes. Now all megaspores will not form the female gametophyte. Now one of these megaspores will form the female gametophyte and that female gametophyte will produce the female gamete. So now here we see that the male and the female gametophytes do not have an independent free living existence. So this male gametophyte and the female gametophyte which we spoke about just now. So none of them have an independent existence. What do I mean by free living existence? That means they cannot exist without each other. I mean they are not independent in their existence. They are dependent. So what do I mean by that? Let us have a look at that. Also, the male and female cones can be present on the same tree or they can be present on different trees. So example of same tree would be pine. So in a pine tree, you can see both the male cone and the female cones are present. Whereas in case of a plant like cycus, if a cypress plant can either be male or it can be female. So if it is a male plant, it will have the male cones. If it is a female plant, it, it will have the female cones.
Okay, one more thing to be explained here is that now why did I say that the male and female gametophytes cannot exist independently? Now here, these gametophytes which I spoke about, they always remain inside the sporangia. So they do not come out of the sporangia and grow and form an independent organism. It will always remain inside the sporangia. That is why it is said that they do not have an independent existence. Okay, so now let us look at the life cycle of a gymnosperm. So this is a gymnosperm and which is the dominant stage of a gymnosperm? So here also sporophyte is the dominant phase. So what happens here? This is my gymnosperm. So this is the sporophyte. So it will have the spores somewhere. So now if you see the male and the female spores. So from this plant, this plant will have both the male cones as well as the female cones. Now here I am trying to show you the male cones and here I am trying to show you the female cones. Now inside the male cones you will have the male sporangium and the male sporangium will consist of the male spores. So let us suppose these spheres are the male spores and these spheres are the female spores which are present inside the archegonium or the female sporangium. So archegonium is a name for the female sporangium. Similarly, antheridium is the name for the male sporangium. So now meiosis will happen and these spores will get released. So the spores which are released from the male uh, sporangium, they are the microspores and those released from the female, they are the megaspores. So megaspores are larger in size than the microspores. Now one of these megaspores, which I have denoted here as little big, so one of these megaspores will actually form the female gametophyte. So one of these megaspores formed the female gametophyte and these microspores form the male gametophyte. So now we have both female gametophyte and male gametophyte. So these gametophytes will now produce the gametes. So here if you see, this is female gametophyte, it produced the archegonium where the female, where the female gametes are produced. Now the male gametophyte will produce the male gametes and what are the male gametes? It will pass the male gametes to the female gametophyte. What are the male gametes? They are nothing but the pollen grains. So they are passed here and the egg is already there. So now fusion will take place. So first pollination will take place. That is this transfer of pollen grains to the female gametophyte. That is pollination. Then fertilization that is fusion of the pollen grain with the egg. So this fusion will take place. So as a result a zygote will be formed. Now this zygote will grow gradually to form the embryo and this embryo will finally grow back again to form a mature sporophyte. So this is the life cycle of a gymnosperm. So here also the dominant phase is the sporophyte. So now did you, where did you observe the seed here? What was the role of the seed here? Because now gymnosperms are the plants with seeds. So here when I was talking about the embryo, what was that embryo? This embryo was actually present inside the seed and then this seed germinates into a plant. So this is a process which all of us see in our day to day life. You would have seen, you would have yourself planted so many plants with the help of seeds. So when you put the seeds, water it nicely, you get a plant. So this is what happening, this is what is happening here. So basically your plant when it grows up, when it becomes matured, it is nothing but the sporophyte phase. So it will now contain spores. So it will give out the male spores, that is microspores, it will give out the female spores, which are megaspores, then they will form the gametophytes and the process will keep on continuing. So this is about the life cycle of a uh, gymnosperm. So here we see that both gametophytes and next generation's new sporophyte develop on the sporophyte parent plant. So if you see here, this is my sporophyte parent plant. This is the parent plant from where this process started. So now when the gametophyte is formed, where are these gametophytes formed? 
the gametophytes are formed in this plant itself right it is not formed outside the plant so both the gametophytes are formed on this plant and that is why it is said that the gametophyte does not have its individual existence you do not see a separate gametophyte like how we saw in case of uh, a fern or a moss there we saw that gametophyte was altogether a different small plant right but in this case we do not have a separate gametophyte the gametophytes do not have their individual existence they are present inside the parent plant itself now again when this seed also germinates into a new plant so this embryo is also formed as a part of this plant itself so now when you take out the so the seeds when the seeds are also there or when the cones are also formed they are also formed in the sporophyte in the parent sporophyte itself okay so please understand these concepts very much clearly that what happens to the gamete because gametophyte and sporophyte concept needs to be understood very very clearly please go through the slides over and again until and until you get until and unless you get a very clear understanding the gametophyte and sporophyte role in case of bryophytes pteridophytes and gymnosperm they are all different and the way it things happen the way the life cycle happens it's a little different so please try to and once you understand the life cycle i have tried to explain the life cycle in the easiest possible way you also go through the life cycle once the life cycle is clear everything else will automatically be clear because life cycle explains it all so with this i think we have understood the life cycle of a gymnosperm so here you can look at this picture this is a pine tree where you can see a male and a female cone so these are the cones so both the male and the female cones are present in the same plant so the dominant stage here again is the sporophyte now let us look at the importance of gymnosperms or do, does it have any economic use talking about the economic use one important thing is it controls soil erosion in forests as i told you before also that you will see a lot of gymnosperms in the hilly areas or in the forest like areas so there it i mean there is so much of land there so if those trees are not there you can actually imagine vast land just like that so during heavy rains or flood there will be lot of soil erosion so it actually controls the soil erosion some of its economic uses is it helps in making of soap nail polish perfumes and also for some food materials it also acts as lumber you would have seen that as i said these these um, gymnosperms have a lot of wood in them because first of all the trees are quite tall so you have so much of wood in them so these days people have actually started cutting down these trees just to utilize those wood which is helpful in making furniture and stuff like that but then again that is also not good because if we end up cutting down too many trees that will again cause an imbalance in the atmosphere because we actually saw how do plants help it it actually controls the soil erosion it helps to increase the level of oxygen in the atmosphere so plants give out oxygen and we need oxygen to breathe in so if there are less plants there will be less oxygen in the atmosphere so we will get less oxygen to breathe in so it will be threatening our survival right so we should not cut down too many trees so that the atmosphere remains green and healthy so these are some of the economic uses of gymnosperms so with this thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again